All right, so we're back with the rendering and zap link portion of our tiling texture process. And we're going to look at rendering an AO pass inside of ZBrush now in this video. So I've got my merged down copy of all of my layers here that's just painted with a basic material and is white. And I'm going to go ahead and load a custom light rig. Make sure I've got preview render selected first. That way ZBrush doesn't try to do a best render on me. And I'll load up a custom light rig. Let's take a second just to look at some of these settings at a glance here. So my first light is going to be just this top-down light pointing straight at the canvas. In fact, actually, if I just turn all these off, whoops. We can see that it's just doing this sort of, you know, this this illumination straight down into the canvas. Uh, one thing to note too is that it's we've got some higher quality shadows here. They're relatively soft, and it's just a regular sunlight. The next light is optional, but I use it just to sort of lighten some of the edges a little bit. It's just a little bit of a radial light. Uh, another thing to point out is that the intensities are all sort of dialed down as well uh, because since all this light is going to add up, you know, I'm essentially once they're all on, whoops, once they're all on, I don't really want to clip uh, the highlights out too much. I want to have a good range from black to white. So they're all kind of low intensity and generally have soft shadows soft high quality shadows I should say. So it's kind of an old school sort of ambient occlusion light rig. And the last three lights it's basically just this triangle of lights just these sort of soft shadow casting lights that are gonna help just get cast shadows in multiple directions. So this is a good light rig to use in like uh, on a ground plane or or just to get general ambient occlusion it might take a little bit to set up and get working um, depending on what material you're using and to balance the intensity of all the lights and the shadow settings and managing performance too by the way because you don't want it to, to take forever to render but once you have a light rig that works it's worth its weight in gold because you can keep re-rendering it to create nice ambient inclusion maps inside ZBrush so I've got shadows on and of course set your anti-aliasing and we'll just execute a best render and I'll cancel it right away with escape and I'll just use zap link to send it over to Photoshop and see what we get alright so the render is complete and you'll see this is what we get now in Photoshop and I'll just shift select and flatten and bring it back into the document from the last video and a couple things to note about the last video is that you see that it doesn't line up with our original sort of canvas placement um, and that's just because I offset this in order to keep nice cast shadows inside of my grout areas so I'm gonna go ahead and fix the seams real quick just by filter other offset so I'll just clone that out using the spot healing brush and one more time here and of course I have content aware selected here so now to get this back in place I'm just gonna offset one more time take that off and we're good so my ambient occlusion is a little bit more stylized because of the custom material I was using from the last video uh, it's just a little bit toothy from the, the cavity settings that I've got. Um, but you'll see the ambient occlusion in general is really nice and I've got a good range going from not quite black and I'm clipping out a little bit but it's probably more due to all the cavity settings here so as an, a, as an AO map um, it's pretty good. So if I go ahead and multiply that down onto my shadow map you'll see that when we look at just the light map the shadow map here you see that these form shadows get really dark and where we should have all of these you know really dark ambient occlusion inside of these crevices 
uh, it just it doesn't quite light realistically. So when I multiply the AO down, it's going to give us much better lighting overall. So it'll be a little bit of work uh, setting up that rig and getting it balanced and getting the look that you need, but uh, once you have it, it's worth its weight in gold because it's going to give you just uh, really good results in combination with a good light pass. So that's it. That's kind of the basics of Zaplink and some of these, you know, basic passes out of ZBrush. Um, you know, we could go ahead and and you know combine our lighting and then you know multiply it down by a percentage here and um, you know call it done. But in the next video, we'll take a look at some additional custom materials that we can use to create some custom masks so that we can do some additional color blending on top of our sort of base poly painting here.